John chapter 7. Check this out. A little nugget here. John chapter 7. No one protested publicly for fear of the Judeans. That's what I'm titling, titling this little passage here. Verse 10. But when his, Yahusha's brothers, had gone up, then Yahusha also went up to the feast. Not openly, though, but as it were in secret. Then the Judeans sought him at the feast and said, where is he? And there was much complaining among the people concerning him. Some said, he is good. Others said, no, on the contrary. He deceives the people. However, verse 13, let me highlight this. Look at this. You might not see this as significant, but I, it jumped out to me. However, no one spoke openly of him, Yahusha, for fear of the Judeans. Do you think this is a positive sentence or a negative sentence? Do you think the author of the book of John is praising and affirming this type of behavior? Or is he, not, is he uh, condoning it or is he condemning it? You know that fear of man is not of Yahuwah, right? What does scripture say about the fear of man? The love of Yahuwah casts away all fear. He's, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of a sound mind. So the fact that people were not standing up for Yahusha, who was good, as it says in verse 12, he is good. Some people are secretly talking about this. Yeah, I think he's a good guy. They're all at this feast talking secretly. Yeah, he's a good guy. I think he's nice. Some people are like, nah, I disagree with you, man. But when it comes to speaking openly, oh, they're quiet. Oh, I nah, I got no comment, bro. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know if he's legit. I'm not sure. I haven't seen evidence. For fear. Some people don't post things on, and I know this for a fact. I know this for a fact that there are a lot of Messianics and Hebrew Roots people who, because of their jobs or because of their uh, con congregation and their political position and their congregation predominantly probably being Republican and conservative, that they choose not to address real issues that the conservative uh, Republican Party are against on their social media pages because of fear. Fear of man. My job knows that I have a YouTube channel. I'm in a construction union, union construction industry in New York City. And they talk about, these got a YouTube channel, these got a YouTube channel. Did that stop me? I went to class this week. I started classes again for my last year of apprenticeship. And one of the announcements in class was, we are not going to be talking about politics in class at all. There will be zero tolerance for that. Anybody that talks about politics will be sent home. I'm like, that's cool with me. Because I, I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll get into it. And most time, union guys, construction workers, they do. They all get into it. Everybody gets into it. They loud, obnoxious. OK, so as a rule of thumb, they said it's not going to be discussed. But is that stopping me from using my YouTube channel? Am I afraid to lose my job? I don't care. It's my responsibility as an ambassador of Yahuwah to use my platform to speak against injustice. Did we ever get that definition of ambassador? Again, ambassador. Again, this is a political word, man, that, that scripture uses. Ambassador. Matter of fact, let's look that word up. Check this out. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 5, 19 to 21. That is, that God was in Messiah reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Despite our past, Yahuwah doesn't look at our past and say, oh, because of your past, 
No, as long as we're willing to repent, he doesn't look at our past. Verse 20, now then, we are ambassadors for Messiah. As though God were pleading through us. Check that out. Pleading through us. When you protest, when you rally, when you use your social media platform to speak up against injustice, you are pleading. Yeah, God, God, Yahuwah, is pleading through you. We implore you on Messiah's behalf, be reconciled to God. When we're advocating for justice and protesting against injustice, we are trying to reconcile the world to God. We are trying to reconcile people in a tangible, literal way. We're not just going out and say, repent, believe the gospel. Repent, believe the gospel. Okay, what is the gospel? What are you telling people? Stop sinning. Okay, what is sin? So when you actually start addressing literal issues of sin, and one of them that we're addressing right now is inequality, racism, injustice, showing partiality, police officers not getting the same punishments that regular humans would get for murder, the murdering of aborted babies, 900 black babies a day murdered in abortion clinics, when we speak out against these things, we are trying to reconcile the world to God. Verse 21, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Remember, Job says that he puts on righteousness. This is before Yahusha died on the cross. Job is way before the Messiah died on the cross. And Job was saying, by me physically taking part in being an advocate for justice and protesting against injustice, I am putting on the righteousness of God. It is like a robe and a turban to me. It's beautiful. This is all over the scriptures. You cannot, you cannot ignore the spirit and the heart of scripture on this matter. But we are ambassadors, and the word ambassador is a very political word that Paul decided to use in his epistle. We're almost done. 